right. So you might be saying, well, I don't want to do any of it. But before you go there, let's talk about the benefits of getting a lease option for the landlord. So first off, the tenant will feel a pride of ownership most likely in the property because they're hoping to buy it someday. That's the idea. So hopefully they take better care of your property. That's first. Second, the tenant buyer pays a non-refundable option fee. So it's not a deposit like they put if they were renting. It's non-refundable and it's three to five percent of purchase price. So um, whether they can exercise the option or not, uh, they have to pay you this option fee. And so that, that can really increase cash flow. In addition to that, the tenant buyer tends to pay a higher monthly payment, higher than regular lease payments, because in some contracts, if you write it this way, a portion of the payment goes towards the eventual purchase price. So uh, let's say that the normal market rents are $1,000. You might charge your tenant $1,100 with $100 or $200 going towards the purchase price. And this, this works out well for the tenant, which I'll talk about later, You know why they would want to do that. Now some lease options require the tenant buyer take care of repairs and maintenance as if it were their own home. So this is just another way to really increase your cash flow by writing this up in the contract. And, um, and then if they do eventually exercise their option and purchase the property, the sales fees would be lower for you most likely um, unless you've made a different arrangement because you already have the buyer in place and you already have the sales contract in place. So, um, you know, you're not maybe necessarily paying that 6% six per, six unless an agent drafted this for you and, um, and wants their fees. But again, be careful of that because sometimes agents draft these lease options, um, pulling them down from the internet, you know, from, from some site, some legal site. Um, and, and as you can see, as I've already said, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure a, a really good attorney has reviewed your lease option. The risks of a, of a lease option for, to the landlord, I already went over this, but I'm going to emphasize it again. The tenant buyer could be late on payments. This could result in evic eviction costs, turnover costs, and vacancy. So um, in states where it wouldn't necessarily be a foreclosure, but you know, if they stop paying, you still have to evict them. Well, it's just like any rental property, you would face you know fees for that, but um, it's a lot cheaper and faster to evict. So um, lease options can be great, great options for the landlord in states that um, that don't treat them like a sale. Now, in the case of default, the landlord may have to foreclose rather than evict. This is a huge risk. So again, make sure you understand the state laws. And that's why we're here at Real Wealth Network, because we help you understand those different state laws. The market fluctuations could be in your favor or not, depending on how you drafted the contract. So let's just say that you sold a property on contract um, in a lease option, and the value of that property went way up during the option period, and now you know, you're giving a bunch of equity away. So that's great for the tenant, maybe not so great for you. So just you got to be really careful in understanding where you think the market's going to go. And that's why in most cases it's better for you as the landlord to to have a, a higher option price. Um, it, shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be too high, and I'll explain why later, but um, it needs to account for potential appreciation and, uh, and, and I mean something legitimate, you can't just say oh, it's going to go 15% or 10% because it has, I mean that's not accurate, but 6%, 5%, that would be pretty average. It's, you know, if you just look at the average of the area where the property is, I think that would be legit. And that way, if, if the value isn't, if, if it doesn't pan out and, the, and it ends up not appreciating, well, the tenant buyer doesn't have to buy it, you know, if they, if they don't like the price or they can come back and negotiate it. So it, it doesn't hurt the tenant really to offer a higher option price, but it could hurt you if values go way up and now the property is worth much more and, and you're leaving money on the table. All right, so some states have very strict lease option laws or don't allow them at all. So again, this is why you need to talk to somebody with experience. Texas would be one of those places. Very, very strict new laws because so many investors and landlords were offering these lease options and, and taking all these fees, you know, the option fee and raising the lease payments and, and, and having the tenant buyer pay for maintenance, but all the while knowing they never stand a chance of ever buying that property and that they're just going to lose all that. So some states are really, really protecting the consumer and you don't want to be, um, <laughs> you don't want to get in trouble for uh, hurting consumers for sure. When you sell property to investors, 
there aren't so many laws protecting investors, but when you sell property to a consumer, very, very different. There are consumer protection laws that you may or may not know about, so you need to know about them.